Across America, more and more states are legalizing marijuana in each passing year. But at the federal level, the government isn't catching up. The Department of Justice says that marijuana enterprises are free to operate as long as they comply with state regulations and don't engage in other bad practices like selling to children or working with drug cartels. The IRS, however, considers any marijuana enterprise to be a criminal organization participating in drug trafficking. The Department of Justice and the IRS are right across the street from each other in Washington, D.C., but on policy, they're miles apart. Which one is right? Right now, it's both. My name is Josh Genderson. My family owns and operates two cultivation licenses in Washington, D.C. Currently, we have about a thousand plants growing. This is uh, the bedroom uh, and the mother room. So this simulates the first stage in the process, basically leading up to bloom time. So those plants that were cut and put into the cloner are then taken into this room, placed in tents until they're able to be potted into a three gallon pot. This is the first of the flower rooms, which begins the simulation of the budding process. This is the next stage in flower. This is about five weeks. This is the final stage of flower. These plants are just about to be cut down and processed. This is the cure room, the drying room, so the walls are cedar lined. Plants are hung to dry before the trim process begins. Marijuana is a Schedule One substance. Marijuana sits with substances like heroin and ecstasy as what the federal government considers the most dangerous drugs with absolutely no medicinal value. We talk to mothers, for example, that have epileptic children, uh, kids that have 50 seizures a day. And with the CBD medicine we make, they went from 50 to zero. Zero seizures, they're in school, they're playing soccer. And just to see like the emotion that comes from that, that was a big impetus for us. And just to see the benefits for all sorts of illnesses. Schedule one substances are hard to study. In medical research, it's very difficult to get clearance to use the products, to actually conduct studies on them. But for marijuana, the federal government treats it even more unique compared to all of the other Schedule I substances. It makes medical research on a product that's continuously and frequently prescribed for medicinal use all that much harder. My name is Rabbi Jeffrey Kahn. We're in Tacoma Wellness Center, which my family have owned and operated since August 2013. We see people with just about every condition from just about every walk of life who find relief from medical marijuana. We see cancer patients, people who are in treatment using chemotherapy, radiation, who find that they're nauseous, they can't eat, they can't keep up their energy. They find great relief with medical marijuana. It stimulates the appetite. Seizure disorders um, and some form of epilepsy. People who can't sleep. Um, people who have muscle spasms from different kinds of conditions, multiple sclerosis, but others as well, who have tried other kinds of uh, pharmaceuticals and find this to be the way that they really find relief. Patients are finding every day that they're getting some medicinal value out of the use of cannabis. But government researchers and researchers in universities across America aren't doing the work to find out whether this is true. It's not being studied like other pharmaceuticals, even though people are claiming there's pharmaceutical benefits. For cannabis, the additional barrier that exists is that the federal government has set up a DEA-mandated monopoly through the National Institutes on Drug Abuse. They have a monopolistic control over the growth of any marijuana used in federal research. That means if you're a researcher and you want to conduct medical experiments on marijuana, you can only get your supply from one source, a farm at the University of Mississippi. I think it's a very good jumping off point to know why the federal government's policies are so harmful to pediatric patients specifically. We could take a, a slow five-minute stroll 
and be in the heart of Tacoma Park, Maryland, a whole other state from here, where there are children who are suffering and need this medication, but we can't give it to them because of, uh, of government policies. There's no other example of this happening with, with, with any other product here in the United States of America. There's an inspection about once every two weeks to once a month. And there's a representative from the Department of Health and a representative from the police department. A big part of this process is tracking seed to sale. So they want to know, okay, you started with this seed and you planted it and you went through the vegetative process and you went through the flowering process and it was cut down and it was turned into product that we sold as, as flour and it was turned into product that we made oil out of. And then with that oil, we made a cartridge and we made a vial of medicine. Rescheduling marijuana will help lighten some of the burden that researchers face in trying to apply for and get designated as a researcher who can study the drug. There have been four petitions to reschedule marijuana. One is still pending. The three others since the 1970s have been denied. Rescheduling can be done in one of two ways, either through congressional action or through executive action. Executive action to reschedule marijuana is very complicated. It involves the Attorney General, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, the Drug Enforcement Administration, the Food and Drug Administration. Frankly, it's pure and simple bureaucracy, but there's nothing simple about it. If Congress reschedules marijuana, it passes a law and the president signs it, and that's it. It's rescheduled. The limits on what you can grow, what you can produce, there's a hurdle for everything. And bureaucracy tends to tie things up. It's probably the only uh, concerning piece to the entire industry. I mean, we're a medical facility, we make medicine. Anybody that knows about business, there are write-offs. You're able to write things off in business, uh, cost of goods sold. You're able to write off things you do for the business. In cannabis, there's no write-offs. And so everything's really very heavily taxed. It's a burden, but it hasn't stopped us. We started with a, I can't remember how many pages it was, but I think it was a 20 page application where you had to initial 23 times acknowledging that you were gonna break the law and that you knew you were gonna break the law and that if you went to jail for breaking the law, you wouldn't blame anybody in the District of Columbia. All these ridiculous things. The worry, I guess, would be that it's not federally legal. And while it's there, there's not much precedent for the federal government to go after a controlled state program such as this one. We comply with every single box. We don't cut corners. We believe that we're staying in the right and we've really limited any sort of negative exposure to the federal government. The president, Congress, federal officials, people throughout government need to take ownership of this disconnected set of policies, set of laws, and set of regulations, which make it confusing for states and for marijuana enterprises to go on. It's time for the federal government to relax regulations so that we can have medical research. Uh, we need the research here in this country to make sure that medical cannabis, like every other substance, is safe, that the government is looking out for, for safety for all of us, and uh, it needs to be done. Either marijuana is illegal or it's legal and regulated, but it can't be both.